Hello there everyone, the Flames of Insanity here. And today I'm going to be making a commentary on Joshua Covey House. If you want to wear then Joshua Covey House, the commentary who has been, who has been in one of the most infamous degree chains that I know of, the Joshua Tree. So then, if you want to wear then Joshua Covey House decided there would be a good idea in order to make a commentary on mm -mm, Cinematic Venom. So then, I'm going to go ahead and list up the degrees. Cinematic Venom decided it would be a good idea in order to try to commentate on Doug Walker. Thus, the, thus, Illinois guy in the game decided it would be a good idea in order to commentate on that. And thus, Cinematic Venom responded to that. And that's what Joshua is commentating on. So then, I am degree number 5 in this chain. So then, let's go ahead and get right into the commentary. Hello, YouTubers. Joshua428 speaking. Today's commentary, I'll be commentary on Cinematic Venom. His response to Illinois guy's face first commentary on his response to the Star Trek Chris review of Jack. I know Dual Tones covered this before, but I feel like it's different enough for me to commentate on. Cinematic Venom is a reviewer slash comedian who either lives in Australia or the United Kingdom or came from those places from his accent. And I think I have a feeling he's going to label me as a hater and respond to this even though I'm not. Now if that out of way, let's dive in. Today Oh I and so I have two things to say. One, what's up with the sudden audio drop? I mean I don't exactly know why the audio just suddenly dropped, because before you were sounding completely and all the audible. And then as soon as the subtitles came up, your audio suddenly dropped to a bismal level. Now granted this might sound like an in a nitpick because, well, the subtitle popped up as soon as the audio dropped. But you know it's still extremely distracting to me. Secondly, no, Dual Tones did not cover this video. Dual Tones covered Illinois' commentary on Cinematic Venom. Cinematic Venom responded to that commentary. What Dual Tones covered was Illinois' commentary. Blockbuster Buster, which was, well, shit. So shit we couldn't respond to any of the points that he made. Next up, Film Brain! I actually saw your response to him. And for I saw, you was the point that Batman Forever is more colorful than dark when the other two were more dark than colorful. He found the point that it wasn't like the other two movies. And I actually find his acting over the top. Probably because he's saturating his emotions to make it look like something different. Also, why does it matter that they don't cover it? Were you going to take a quantum note if they did? Granted, their commentary on you was quad. Two things to say here. Firstly, why exactly said that it would be a good idea in order to try to go back and Debunk something from the blockbuster buster commentary. Secondly, why in God's name, why in God's name did you say that you find it acting over the top? Yes, well, you do, you might find it acting over the top. Cinematic Venom doesn't. That's your opinion. And thinking that you said that, that's automatically up on the internet. So you think Nostalgia Critic makes good points most of the time, then go on to say that he often contradicts himself. Yes, it is possible. Okay, Doug Walker has done reviews now for nearly 10 years. So even if he contradicted himself in 50 reviews, that's still enough for me to say, oh, he often contradicts himself. But there's still thousands more where he didn't. D that's how ratios work. Woo! Often, frequently, many times, many a time, on many slash numerous occasions, a lot, as often as not, repeatedly, again and again, time and time again, all the time, regularly, routinely, usually, habitually, commonly, generally, in many cases slash instances, ordinarily, oftentimes, recurrently, in formal lots, literally, often, oft times, in many instances. If he often contradicts himself, when we see this in all of his reviews? By the way, the ones you say he contradicts himself? Why exactly did you decide to read off all of the synonyms for often? You could have just read off the definition and that would have been fine. Viewing off all of the definition, it just can't feel like padding. Most of that were either jokes or something you didn't pay attention to. Don't worry, we'll get to it soon. You just read off the definition of often. He didn't say all, he said often contradicts himself. So then that doesn't mean that he contradicts himself all of the time. What you did was forget about the word often and just said that he contradicts himself. My point was, because you people don't listen to what I actually say, you just twist it out of context, was that Doug specifically bitched that Dark Knight Rises had too much filler, making it long and boring. But Lord of the Rings, I proved, has loads of filler. 
I pointed out several scenes where the plot comes to a complete standstill. Nothing happening is story driven. Nothing happening is character development. So it's completely pointless and padding and filler. Likes it when they do it. Doesn't when Dark Knight Rises does it. That's the point I was trying to make. Fascinating when you listen. Speaking of which, I noticed in your video that Doug said that the length may bore you. Meaning, in his opinion, he found it boring. But just because he found it boring doesn't mean you will too. That's not the argument though. The argument they brought up was that true while the Doug Knight Doug Walker found boring, he finds the Law of the Wing trilogy entertaining. Something that he found more filler in. You do realize that the Happy Madison jab was a joke? Did that ever occur to you at any point? My problem is that it was in poor taste. If it was a throwaway line, then fine. But it was in poor taste and it was a dragged out thing, implying that all Happy Madison fans are fucking morons. I could probably say the same thing about your humor, it's just one of them didn't sound like a joke. The, you have a point clip, do you not anything that would consider a joke? Maybe if you sound like Dr. Clarence said, I'll get you next time, Gadget. Next time. Or say, I shall have blood soon. Maybe it'll indicate that it was a joke. But here's the thing though, that's your opinion. True while, you, true while that's your sense of humor, that's not other people's sense of humor. Dude, I grew up with a female best friend at school, and I can tell you firsthand, they're just as fucking nonsensical and bipolar as boys are! Did that little girl eventually become your wife? Are you actually Richard Watterson? Is your son named Gumball? Is your wife Nicole- <clears throat> Um, one, you didn't count on my point. Two, I don't get it. The thing is, uh, apparently you're referencing a show or movie or something that I've, I've never seen, but this is filler, like this joke could have been cut out considering you don't counter anything, so it, it's filler! And you bitch about me using filler! Then allow me. The Nostalgia Quick was making a joke. It was not meant to be taken seriously. Uh... Were you a thing? Who were you a thing to? Because I didn't see Nostalgia Critic anywhere near that scene. Alright then, so... Thinking final thoughts time. First of them, Linda Ayo balanced a bit better. May I suggest trying to find out what the original audio of of the audio clip was, and then trying to find out what and trying to find out how to balance it out from there. Secondly, you ignored the word often so that way you could have yourself an argument against cinematic venom. No, don't do that. Don't ignore a piece of wording so that way you could have yourself some little of an argument. Alright then, so that's all I have. Thank you guys for 18 subscribers, and I will see you guys on the flip side.